Hello my beautiful stereo friends, today we're gonna decorate the hilltop farm. I've also decided to share my amazing knowledge on decorating in Stardew Valley. And before we begin, I must make this stupid skirt the exact same green, which it never is. And we're done! So let's- whoa! Calm down! Okay, maybe let's first check our mods. Okay, we're good? Still really fast, but okay. It's the first day on the farm where you got to enjoy a whole new world, a new adventure. Discovery stupid. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, now beginner's tools. Noted. As I was saying, we've got a whole new adventure ahead of us. Maybe not as slow paced as most Stardew Valley farms, but still we get to enjoy clearing out the overgrown farm you begin with. Walking to Pierre. Okay, what are you searching for now? Seriously, I have an audience I'm talking to. Oh yeah, late game content, obviously. Exactly what I thought. Please stop hitting that poor chest. You good? Okay, and we have our tools. So now we get to slowly clear out and we're done. We're done, great job. It's only 2 p.m. and we've got the farm all cleared out. At least we get to go to Pierre Steel, buying our first parsnip seeds. Right? Right? Okay, who am I kidding? Both our patients combined doesn't even come close to the patience of a four-year-old. I think we have enough money. At least we have all the backpack upgrades. Okay, so now the decorating part can begin. Where are you going? Oh, to bed. That's actually not a bad idea. Oh, hey, it's Demetrius. Could you let him speak? No, okay, but hey, we have some... We had some mail. Ready for decorating? Okay. Per usual, we start with the big structures. They take up the most space and give a good general idea of what you want to do with the surroundings. I decided to put the animals on top of the hill since the ground could look like mud. And I always like to put my animals in a more closed off space. Now that we have the main big structures, we can look at the stuff that takes up the most space after that. This can be trees, fences, or flooring and pathing. Where is our pathing? Anyways, after that it's onto the detail phase, which is in a lot of cases endless. You add a bit of grass, a bit of decor, a bit of stuff that looks useful but is actually also decor. Hey, there's our pathing, I know you could do it. And that's a section done. Most of the time I like to work in sections. This way you can easily plan out areas per category, like animals, farm space, fish, ponds, sheds, or whatever you want to add to your farm. I also like to do this because decorating the details is more fun and gives you a good idea of how it will eventually look like. And thank you for planting those tea saplings. This is one of my favorite decorating tricks, since the tea saplings look like bushes. We don't really have bushes in Stardew Valley we can place, except for the tea leaves. Also, my second tip is trial and error. I've seen this design where they had put some trees next to the bee houses and wanted to put it up here. It took some time to get the flooring right, but eventually it looks great. And wow, we have a lot of tips in this area. Because number three is about fences. We have normal wood and hardwood fences, each having their own color. But like you can see here, the hardwood doesn't match the flooring, so I chose for the normal wood fences. A good thing you should also remember is dark colors tend to go to the background, whereas light colors tend to be in the foreground. I already have light colors in this area. If I had used the hardwood fences, it would have been a mess with everything wanting to be in the foreground. With the normal wood, we have some contrast, and it is in balance. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't think you can get there. <laughs> yep, that is better. Also, sometimes you just need a break. Go to bed and wake up with lots of inspiration. Wait, where are you going? Oh, I see, we're apparently first going to complete the community center. No, we're not even gonna complete it, just needing the magic ink. That is smart though, not gonna lie. And yes, now we have access to all the structures. As we're building up the farm area, another tip is to think about the efficiency of your farm. If you want to have a pretty farm, you probably also have to give up some useful space. For example, you don't need the best sprinklers for all your crops. Using the quality sprinklers for these little sections can actually create more variety in shapes, which makes it look more interesting. 
And look who it is. It's tip number four. Use different trees. There are a lot of tree variants in this game and you don't have to use just the normal four. Fruit trees are amazing. I especially love the orange trees because of the small trunk. Even though the fruit trees look like normal trees without their fruits, you can place them wherever you like. Because of this, I always like to put them in a pattern, this time around the river. To finish it off, I use these saplings and fences, which is our fifth tip. When I put the fences along a path, I like to not connect them. Most of the time, I only place two or three next to each other. This creates a less chunky railing. And we're on to creating areas. Apparently her big decor inspiration is gone, so we're just gonna place some big structures everywhere and marking out the areas we want to fill in. Oh, and we're back with the inspiration. I always like to make a fishing area where you could also actually fish if you want to, even though you will probably catch a lot of trash. I also like to put random chests everywhere, sometimes hidden like now. Sometimes I build the shed for all of my chests, and sometimes I like to put chests everywhere around my farm. And look, here is our orchard. Most of the time I use cherry or apricot saplings because of their squared shape. And again, we need a random chest area. After that, I took a little break and when I came back, probably a few days later, I had to run around the farm. So I started with placing a shed. Most of the time I try to build max 3 sheds, otherwise it will look more like a village than a farm. This one is dedicated to wine, so I also like to show that on the outside. And let's also do one for crystallariums. Not only is it pretty, it's also useful since you get to see if the machines are done on the outside. And let's see, what are you building now? Oh, I see it, it's gonna be a coffee related area. Every farm needs this in my opinion. It looks always really pretty and if you don't use mods to make you run faster, coffee is an essential. And now we have tip number 7. Walk along your path to see if it feels right. Why are you not walking? You know what, never mind. Technically, I could walk past the coffee beans I have planted, but it feels cramped. And by walking around your farm, you can easily find these spots. It looks already much better now. When I came back, I obviously checked the entire farm, but suddenly this is here. I have honestly no idea when I built that and I can't find the footage. Yeah, just walk away, like you're walking away from all of your problems. Anyways, one of my favorite useless builds I use for decoration is the mill. Seriously, I've never used it for its actual purpose. The main reason why I love it so much is it doesn't take up that much space. It creates dynamic because it moves and you have a reason to plant more crops. I also had to put some rare crops because they are just so cute. And we're onto some more pathing. And we're destroying the pathing. Normally I don't like to put another house on the farm, but I'm gonna try it this time. Most of the times I don't like it because it feels so random, so I placed the house close to my house and also made its own little working space. And oh my god, I love it, why didn't we do this before? Okay, I think we have given enough tips for now. Could you work on the farm so I can let them see the end results? It's not a no, so I take that as a yes.